You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Pinnacle Capital Mortgage Corporation. Now in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Good morning, Real Living, Northwest Realtor friends. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Get motivated. So if you guys are going, let me know how many are going to be there, Stephanie, because I will be there at 7 a.m., probably actually a quarter to, and if I'm standing at the door waiting for it to open, I'm going to be the first one, and if they let us in, that's even better, but I imagine doors are going to be closed until right at 8 o'clock, so I'll be there early. Email me how many people, staff are coming, and I'll get seats saved for all of us front and center. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's if I'm not there with, I'm going to be camping out with a tent. And I'm going to up you, Tina Mitchell. I'm going to be oh there before you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let's go camping together. It is so much fun. I'm so excited. And if you guys don't remember me saying quite a few times, I'm going to repeat it because Real Living Online Meeting was the inspiration. It was the inspiration for me that completely changed my morning, completely changed how excited I am for my day. And I have never looked back. I listened to Les Brown and... Uh, Eric Thompson every morning, and to see uh, Les live is is so amazing. And Kiyoki, uh, thank you again for the motivation, inspirational videos. Because if it weren't for you, my mornings would not be as awesome as they are uh, today. So I'm no, so excited. Like, what what chapter? What, what chapter do you talk about that in your book? Uh, there, I talk about it in. Oh, she doesn't I'll talk about you in her book. She talks about I me. Know. All my book. personal conversations. <laughs> well, because you didn't write, you didn't write a testimonial. Nobody asked me to write a testimonial. I just can't believe I'm not in your book. <laughs> you are definitely in my book. I'm just leaving that for a surprise, Kiyoki. All right. So moving on to all of our important part of uh, the mortgage minutes this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and Kiyoki, you can see my screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, Steph had made a comment in regards to uh, interest rates and, you know, when the Fed increased prime, so I thought, thought I would come back in and talk just about mortgage interest rates versus uh, the Fed and prime and how this differs or it, how it's different. So mortgage interest rates, do you ever have your clients asking how mortgage interest rates move? And especially when we saw the Fed's increase prime and we saw mortgage rates go down, that can be a little bit confusing. And it's not confusing if you understand that they're completely different and how they work. So that's why I want to take just a couple minutes here. Uh, mortgage rates follow the bond market. It follows the uh, mortgage-backed securities and the, the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. So that's the bond that mortgage rates are directly tied to is the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. Now, if you look at the Fannie Mae 30-year bond and you see that it's at 3.5%, no, that does not mean rates are 3.5% because there's – uh, add-ons and additions to interest rates based on a lot of factors, and that's actually the uh, the base of it, but then, of course, banks have to make money, so they can't sell a rate for what the Fannie Mae 30-year bond is trading at because there would be no income uh, when they sold that mortgage. Similar to corporate bonds, mortgage-backed securities trade all day. Sometimes you see multiple uh, interest rates increase or decrease, just like we see the stock market increase and decrease. Uh, Mortgage-backed mortgage, uh, securities or the Fannie Mae 30-year bond, if it's trading higher, then mortgage rates will go down because mortgage rates are, again, directly tied to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. So if it's trading positively, then that's good for interest rates, so they'll move down. If it's the mortgage-backed uh, security, the 30, Fannie Mae 30-year bond is trading and losing trading price, so trading lower, that means interest rates will go up directly tied, it's opposite because increase is good and decrease is bad. Just like the stock market, we want the stock market trading high, not low, if we're in the stock market. Uh, Mortgage-based uh, are based on supply and demand for uh, Wall Street. That's how bonds are based, is based on the supply and demand for Wall Street, usually opposite of the stock market. Now, why this is, is because investors are Typically, they're investing in the stock market or the bond market. They need to be diversified and in investing in both of them, but you know, majority of their investments, maybe they're going into the stock market because obviously the stock market historically is going to have a much higher return. And so if the stock market's doing well, investors are investing into the stock market for that great higher return. But if the stock market is 
dropping, then investors get nervous. They're pulling out of the stock market and they're going into the bond market, which is good for rates. So they're investing into the bond market for the security. So the bond market will now trade higher, which brings interest rates down. So normally you'll see stock markets opposite of the bond market. So if you watch the stock market and you see the stock market's doing well, really well, chances the bond market is not doing so swell that day and vice versa. Now, does it 100% work like that? No. Sometimes you see the bond market and stock market both dropping or both increasing, but that is not the usual. Usually they'll work opposite of each other for that reason that I just gave you. So mortgage interest rates, um, obviously economic news. So if there's good economic news, that's going to be good for the stock market. If there's bad economic news, that's going to be good for the bond market. Because again, if the good economic news people are risking and they're getting into the stock market for that higher return, so you see how that kind of how that uh, comes into play here between the bond market versus the stock market. Uh, politically un uncertainty, if uncertain about what's going to happen with our uh, political environment or the world, that's going to be anything happening that's negative is going to be good for the bond market. Anything that's happening that's positive typically is good for the stock market. A uh, trading pattern known as the flight to qualify, which affects uh, the bond market and the trading. So here's just a visual of today. Here's the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. So you can see uh, it's up 17 basis points green because that's good for mortgage interest rates. Stock market's down, red, bad. And here's the 10-year, and I want you to look at this because I'm going to talk about this just in a second, but you will hear people in the mortgage industry, and I've heard economists, Actually, and Stephanie, I winked at you at the WCR when, um, I won't mention any names, but the economist was there and said mortgage rates are based on the 10-year bond yield. I can't tell you how many, or had the 10-year treasury. I can't tell you how many times that I've heard people that this is what they do, and they say that mortgage rates are directly tied to the 10-year treasury or to watch the 10-year treasury. You don't want to watch the 10-year treasury. Sometimes the 10-year treasury is moving the same as the Fannie Mae 30-year bond and then that would be accurate. But sometimes they're not. So you see the 10-year Treasury is trading lower when the 30-year bond, the Fannie Mae 30-year bond is increasing. So if you're watching the Treasury, you think that interest rates are actually going up. Well, they're not. They're, they're going down. So it is always through the, the mortgage rates are directly tied to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond, not to the 10-year Treasury. So this is a good question to ask your mortgage professional because you will hear probably 80 or 90 percent say the 10-year Treasury, maybe not quite that high because there's um, uh, a, a little more education. But anyways, um, again, when you hear economists say that, it's, it's kind of uh, amusing. It just shows that we don't have to all be perfect at what we do and we can't be perfect. So that's what I uh, take out of that. Okay, mortgage interest rates. Uh, not governed by the Federal Reserve not by any elective U.S. official, not based on prime, and that's really what this conversation is about today because people here on the, in the media, interest rates went up. And that's what you hear. You, you hear prime being mentioned, but the, you know, the uh, conversation is really interest rates went up. So when you hear interest rates go up, you automatically think all interest rates, including mortgage interest rates, but that is not the case. Prime increase, the Fed's increased prime, that does not mean interest rates, mortgage interest rates went up. A lot of the time it's the exact opposite, and I'll, I'll tell you uh, why in a second. And again, it's not, it does not follow the 10-year treasury. Mortgage rates do not follow the 10-year treasury. Sometimes you'll see the 10-year treasury comparable to what's happening with the Fannie Mae 30-year bond, but a lot of the time they're opposite. So you have to follow the Fannie Mae 30-year bond to know exactly what's happening with mortgage interest rates. Uh, loan level pricing adjustment similar to the middleman. Um, so there's add-ons reflecting to risk. So again, if the Fannie Mae 30-year bond is trading at three and a half, that's what it's. That's what the the trading price is. The rate is at three and a half. Mortgage rates are not three and a half percent because banks have to make an income. So they're selling that rate for a higher amount than what it's uh, what it is actually at. Now. There's a par price, par price meaning that it's the best of everything scenario. And then 
you come in with the risk factors or the add-ons. Now, these add-ons are directly coming from the secondary market. So Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, or if it's a, a government uh, mortgage like VA or FHA, there are all risk factors that are charged to when, when they're on the sold in the secondary market. So banks have to bring on those risk factors and, and give them, pass them on to the consumer. So here would be risk factors. Obviously, credit score. If you have a 740 credit score, which is the highest for mortgage interest rates pricing, you're going to be a lot less risk than if your credit score is lower. Um, the next bracket for adjustment to credit score is, is 720. So we're talking about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So here's your conventional financing. Government is, is uh, different. Uh, 720, 700, 680, 620, and 580. So you're going to have a lot higher interest rate. You can see up for three quarters a percent higher in interest rate at a 580 from what you would see at a 740. Now on government mortgages, I won't get too much off on this uh, at off topic today, but government uh, mortgages, they don't have the price add-ons for the secondary desk for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. I don't know why, but the risk factors are just not set up the same way. So you're going to get the same interest rate all the way to like a 620. The only way you're going to have a higher interest rate on a government loan is if you get into the low FICO score, which would be uh, in the 580. Uh, down payment, obviously the down payment could affect the interest rate, 0, 3.5%, 5%, and 25. So these are actually all the same interest rate. Then when you get to a 25% down payment, you'll see a better interest rate um, on your conventional financing. Uh, property type makes a difference. Single family home is the lowest risk of default. Condo? obvious reasons. You guys know why a condo would be at a higher risk. They don't have complete control. You've got a homeowners association and things get, that can happen that are out of the actual uh, home by, homeowners uh, control. And then multifamily, for obvious reasons, that is the highest risk factor because multifamily, you've got somebody that is renting that other unit, which if for some reason something happens to that renter, it could affect the ability for you to be able to pay back that mortgage. And occupancy, again, for obvious reasons, obviously a primary is going to be a lower risk. And then you go into a second home. Now, second home, you'll see that there actually are not add-ons uh, right now. So second home, you'll see the same price, but you do have a higher down payment requirement uh, on a second home than you would a primary residence. Uh, investment property, higher risk, higher interest rate. So half a percent higher interest rate, and obviously higher down payments as well. Uh, half a percent higher, higher interest rate at a 20% down, uh, 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 oh, I lost my train of thought, quarter to half a percent higher interest rate, three quarters to a percent higher interest rate if you're doing a 20% down, I'm sorry, 25% down, maybe a, a quarter to a half a percent higher in the interest rate. Investment property, when the market tanked and when the economy uh, crashed, everybody first ran away from investment properties and they were trying to hold on to, your, to their primary residence. Okay, so that is the adjustments to interest rate. So let's talk just for a second for the Federal Reserve, and then I'll get things wrapped up for Mortgage Minutes today. Fed funds rate, this is the interest rate controlled by the Fed, and it's the rate that they are loaning to the banks when they're bar, um, it's controlled by the Fed and the rates that are charged to each other. So the when lenders are going for, uh, for the Fed's fund rate, this is actually when they're lending money back and forth to each other overnight loans. That's what the Fed's fund rate is. The discount rate is the interest rate for what the Fed is actually charging to the banks when they're loaning money. And then you've got the prime rate. The prime rate is for the consumers. So when the Feds increase the Fed's fund rate, that increases directly to the prime rate. And the prime rate, here's what the prime affects. Prime affects credit cards, car payments, um, your personal lines of credit, home equity lines of credit. So that's the interest rate that it actually affects. The so home equity lines of credit are not attached to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. Home equity lines of credit are attached to the prime. So these are directly attached to prime. Prime goes up. You're going to be paying higher interest rates on credit cards, car loans, home equity lines of credits, and personal loans, but not mortgage interest rates for your primary mortgage, just the HELOCs, because those are not tied to prime. They are tied to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. So that increases the rates to slow down the economy. So when our economy gets too good, everything's happening too fast, the Fed wants to slow it down, and that's why they will increase the prime rate. That will make it harder for people to borrow money 
which will slow our economy down, if it works. Now, the goal with the higher cost in of the economy, um, the, the goal for higher cost, the economy will slow down. So that's just, just what I said. Um, if successful, the economy slows down and mortgage rates are going to go lower. So why would mortgage rates go lower when the economy slows down? Because the economy slows down. And remember, again, when the economy is not doing so well, investors get nervous. They're going to pull out of the stock market and they're going to go into the security to the bond market. The bond market is what mortgage rates are tied to. So the bond market's doing well, mortgage rates will go down. So even though the Feds just increased prime, their plan was successful. It slowed the economy down, so mortgage rates are going to do the exact opposite and drop. Now, sometimes the Fed's plan fails. It doesn't work. So it failed, meaning people are still borrowing money. They don't care that interest rates are gone up on credit cards. They don't care that home equity line of credit interest rates have gone up, so they're still taking money out to improve their home. The Fed hasn't increased prime enough, so maybe they'll continue increasing it until they slow things down. So if it failed, then you will see mortgage rates increase. So prime increased and mortgage rates increased. So now it looks like Mortgage rates do exactly what Prime does. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but there's no direct tying. It just depends on the strategy that the Fed was moving forward with and whether it was successful or not. So if it was successful, why would mortgage rates go up? Because if the, if the economy doesn't slow down and they failed, why would mortgage rates go up? Because people are still investing in the stock market because everything's all hunky-dory with our economy. And so then mortgage rates are going to go up because everybody's investing in the stock market. So that's just a, a quick mortgage minutes and an overview. Again, the purpose of this was to explain what mortgage rates are tied to. They are tied to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. They are not tied to the 10-year Treasury. Normally, they work opposite of what the stock market is doing, and they are not tied to what the Feds do with prime. If the Feds plan works, then the mortgage interest rates will lower. If the Fed if the flood Fed plan does not work, mortgage interest rates will increase. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning with Safe Seat for Get Motivated. Oh, one more shout-out really quickly here. Um, congratulations. Uh, Les Brown always talks about change, and his... Um, uh, he has many big messages, but one message, if you have any uh, challenges in your day, you're not being su successful or you're feeling that you're failing at something, go look at Les, Bl Bl uh, look up Les Brown possibility. And he is all about representing the possibility that failure is part of life. And it really, what takes, uh, what is the difference is people that are willing to make a difference and make a change. So I want to give a shout out today for our first eight week burn for the Real Living Family starts at 1130. So excited. Congratulations to uh, Cheryl, Travis, Heidi, uh, Britta, and Ray are all going to be experiencing an eight week burn in the spirit of one timing their business. And not only uh, is their business going to change, but when your business changes, your life changes as well. So I'm so excited to uh, start the eight-week burn, and I'll see you guys at 1130 on our Google Hangout online. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Tina.